Cinema Classics is sponsored by the Gateway Film Center and is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. You can listen to full shows online at WCBE.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics, and this is one of my least, fa uh, least favorite conversations <laughs> of the year. <laughs> all I want for Christmas is a good Cinema Classics show. Oh my God. <laughs> this is always so tiresome. <laughs> You know, but it never is. It's so strange. It never is for me. I was going to lead us off by something we've been doing for 15 years. That is, talking about It's a Wonderful Life. Right. And and because... And also, yeah, whatever. Right there are a handful of great Christmas. But I wanted to start with that because I wanted to ask you what, how it, this can survive. How has it survived? Why has this survived? The first one I want to talk about... For many people, the first one they turn to, what is it? What do you mean? I mean holiday I, movies? I, yeah, and, uh, you know, I, it's a wonderful life. How does that thing survive? Well, I think it has deep, significant human meaning. That's why it survives. That's why it has survived. Yeah. Um, it continues to survive because there are certain truths about our day-to-day -day existence in that movie. Okay. Uh, about our class struggle, about our hopes and dashed dreams. Our relationships, how you hold them together. I mean, this that movie is one of the richest films ever made. And I and, agree and, with it, you. and you know the the Christmas element to it is just part of it. You know, we don't have to belabor the point about yeah. it's a wonderful life anymore. You, um, but you know, I was interested in in uh, its relationship, say, to COVID. Am I off by saying that I think there's some COVID business in here? That is the community having to come together. Uh, yeah. Oh, to, well, yeah, the community, but in, in this case, the community rallies around an individual. Right, yeah, oh yeah. The bigger message there, the larger message, though, is why. Why do they rally around this individual? Well, it's because this individual has demonstrated loyalty uh, and compassion to that community. Many, yeah. many times, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of like High Noon, right? Yeah. It's the opposite of High Noon. And High Noon, the community abandons the sheriff. Cool. Uh, and It's a Wonderful Life. They do finally rally uh, around him to don't, save him. Do they not rally in High Noon at the uh, end? It, no, don't. They, I he guess just has not. to face off against them alone, right? Okay. That's why Howard Hawks was so mad about that that he made Rio Bravo. Yeah, and I'm thinking of my Magnificent Seven, where again the community comes in the end. Yeah, they, they do, and, and but there's a there's a complicity there, you know, where uh, in Magnificent Seven that the Seven is teaching the the community how to fight yeah. themselves. They're teaching them how to aim, how to fire guns, how to blah yeah. blah blah. So you know, it's not a surprise when they help. Yeah. Um, All right, let's switch anyway, yes. over. I know, I know. Um, I'm I'm thinking about my favorite, which is Bad Santa, and I always like to bring it up because it's so iconoclastic. Mm -hmm. Because Billy Bob Thornton is just foul mouthed with this eight year old kid, right. or however old this kid is, and I love it for that because it's uh, Christmas is so sacrosanct in our culture. It's like a hands off time. Yeah, nothing bad ever happens, and here we have Bad Santa. So that's that's I the reason I love it. And there's other re you know there like there. Are Christmas horror movies. There's a whole genre I know, I know. of Christmas horror films. Yeah. Um, and they keep coming out. There's one coming out. Uh, it might, by the time this airs, it might be out. It's called um, Black Friday. Oh. With Bruce Campbell. Okay. Where oh, here he is. the shoppers are caught there in, he a, is. Uh, in, a, in a store, a department store with uh, zombies or something. <laughs> Well, there are. I, I wrote down a couple of titles that kind of intrigued me okay. of new ones that were coming. Miracle and Motor City, uh, Smokey Robinson, something in there about it, and then Match Made and Mistletoe. And I have no idea what yeah. they are, but Listen, there are new ones here's coming. The thing. I got <laughs> online and I was like, "What are some? You know, because we do the, the part of the reason why this conversation is so trying, is because year and year, year in and year out, we revisit it, this concept or this topic, and it seems like well. Nothing has replaced the best films, right? And yet they continue to attempt. Yes. It's like it's like Christmas songs. Yeah. And here's the 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 really fascinating thing about a Christmas song, uh, 
new ones anyway, is the minute you hear them, you're like, this sucks, right? <laughs> this is trash. For instance, I remember hearing Last Christmas, Wham!, George Michael's Last Christmas, when it first came out in the 80s, when I was a kid. I heard that and I was like, what the hell is this? This is trash. <laughs> now, by you know decades of exposure to it, I love that song, mm -hmm. right? And it's kind of like the way It's a Wonderful Life worked. It flopped at first, but year in and year out, it quietly crept into the, the subconscious, into the, into the hearts and souls of, of America, and then it, it became this thing. I wanted to ask you this question. Die Hard. You know, people talk course, about Die 1988. Hard. 1988. Is it a Christmas movie, isn't it? It almost doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know how when uh, usage dictates whether something is right in yeah. language or not? Right, so if people mispronounce a word over and over again, eventually it yeah, becomes words, correct, yeah. right? It's That's the same thing with Die Hard. People have had this silly conversation about it for so long <laughs> that it has now become a Christmas movie. Yeah, you know, and it, you, the thing that struck me was not that it's a Christmas movie, but it's about terrorists. In this case, uh, he's saving his wife and the others from German terrorists. Now, that's 1988. Mm -hmm. Now, they're all from the Ukraine or somewhere yeah. else. You, you don't even right. get them. But I was trying to think, you know, let, let's really wrestle with that for a second. What argument can you make that Die Hard is really a Christmas movie? And I think I can make a slight one at least. Um, the friendship that he forms yes. with the cop. Yeah. Uh, it's about reuniting with his wife. It's about uh, valor. Right. You know, it's, yeah, you, you're right. It's, it's just so many other things that are person to person human related yeah and just as you opened it up with yeah if you, who cares when it is it could be easter we don't care right. right but at the end he's reunited with his wife yeah he's made this incredible friendship that will last a lifetime these guys have gone through hell together uh and when you just put that christmas bow around it right it it really highlights those themes in a way that i i think you can make the argument look I'm never going to say Christmas, uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but will I, I will say that it works as one, it can work as one, even though sure. it was never intended as one. And I think you could say almost the same thing about Home Alone. It just, yeah. uh, it's a different take on a home invasion. Right. You know, it happens to be at that time, but for me, I mean, that beautiful house in Cleveland or somewhere. Chicago, yeah. yeah. Chicago. Uh, but then you get one that endures that's relatively new elf. Yeah, that 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 is one that has uh really kind of become a staple. Yeah. A holiday staple. Um and kind of recent, you know, like you don't see a recent film that often yeah. really kind of connecting. Yes. Um but it does it, it has, as silly as it is, there's a warm yeah. heart under it all. Uh there's this message of Christmas spirit and and family, again, you know, he's trying to connect with his father, and yes. he, he gets this family in the yeah, bargain. Yeah. And, uh, and I've often thought that, that that he does represent the big, the, the overgrown kid in all of us. That's great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, that we still, some, some part of us is gets excited about Christmas. I know, I know, Christmas it's amazing. And being around the ones we love. <laughs> um I did want to talk about Gremlins for a minute. Oh, boy. That one always, at least in our conversations, yeah. kind of always slips through. Yeah. But talk about a movie that is both, has horror elements. Yeah. You know, has clear Good connections one. to It's Good. a Wonderful Life. Yes. They reference it specifically. I think the mom is watching it on television at some point. Uh -huh. But uh, you got the horror movie. You got the family yeah. movie. You got fun. It's like, um, that movie is really kind of a... I, it always slips my mind when we talk about great Christmas movies. Well, I'll tell you a title that comes up frequently when you ask people who aren't as nerdy about movies as we are. Hmm. Love Actually. Yes, my wife just mentioned that this morning. Yeah, and that's light. That's light fare. Yeah. I mean, eight segments about couples, and uh, and Hugh is 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 great in it in a sense. But there's nothing nothing magical I think about it but people are just attracted to that thing. well it's because it of the romantic comedy aspects of yeah. it you know yeah. just like you can wed the Christmas movie to a horror genre the horror genre 
or the action genre. You can also marry it to this romantic comedy yep. genre, right?